Hello all, today we'll be seeing or we'll be discussing about K-nearest neighbor, both intuition and the implementation. Intuition will be uh, understanding about both classification use case and for a regression use case, how K-nearest neighbor algorithm actually works. To begin with guys, uh, let us just consider a data set uh, and I'll tell you K-nearest neighbor is a wonderful algorithm if you want to solve for a non-linear classified data points. If that basically means that if your data point is distributed in a non-linear manner, you cannot just draw a straight line and classify those points. Definitely K nearest neighbor, you can basically use it. So let us just go ahead and try to see with the help of an example, how does a K nearest neighbor work? So first of all, I'm going to consider it for a classification problem statement. So if I have a classification use case, so basically classification use case I have. Now, suppose I consider that I have some data points and in this particular data points, I have some data points and in this data point, I have basically two categories. So this is one of my category. The other category, I'll draw it by using blue points. Okay. Now, how does K nearest neighbor work? We will try to understand. Now, suppose we consider in K nearest neighbor, we have to select a K value. This value basically indicates that how many nearest neighbor we are going to consider. Okay. Now suppose if I consider k is equal to 5 and suppose tomorrow uh, after my model is getting trained okay and uh, suppose I get my new data point somewhere here okay my, my new data point is uh, somewhere here okay at this particular data point what I will do is that first of all I'll just check what is my k near k, k value that basically means that how many nearest neighbor I have to consider in terms of distance and for this, there are two parameters, uh, how you can calculate the distance. One is by using Euclidean distance. And the other one is by using something called as Manhattan distance. Now, what I'm saying is that I will try to find out which is my five nearest neighbor from this new point. Okay. Now, suppose I found out and I found out that uh, from this point, okay, uh, let me just draw a newer point so that uh, you get more uh, clear understanding about it. Suppose my new point is somewhere here. Okay, now from this new point, what I'll do is that I've taken my k is equal to 5 as my near, uh, neighbor value. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to see that which are the five nearest points from this point by using Euclidean distance. Again, two distance parameters are used, Euclidean and Manhattan. We'll discuss about Euclidean and Manhattan very clearly. So my first point, suppose this is my nearest point, this is my second nearest point, third nearest point, fourth nearest point, and fifth nearest point. Okay, so this five nearest point I have in terms of Euclidean distance. So let us first understand what is Euclidean distance. Here. Suppose I have two points like P x1 comma y1 at this particular location and I have second point that is P2 x2 comma y2. Now in order to find out the distance between this point, the Euclidean distance formula is basically, I just write it as ED, I'll say it as root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So this is the formula that we basically use for calculating the Euclidean distance. Now similarly, Manhattan distance works in a different way. In Manhattan distance, instead of directly calculating the point, what we do is that we create a right angle triangle and we try to calculate the distance. First, we calculate this distance plus this distance. The addition of this A and B will actually give us with respect to Manhattan distance. But currently, what we are doing is that here we have checked with respect to Euclidean distance. Okay, or you can also use Manhattan distance. So from this uh, distance parameter, what I saw is that my five nearest neighbor from this, I have found out that three points belong to one kind of category that is my pink category. So I'll just write it out as pink category. Okay, then my two points my two points actually belong to my blue category. Blue category. Now what I do is that in this particular algorithm, it says that whichever will be having the highest category with terms to the neighboring point. Okay. So this new point will actually become the pink point because the maximum number of categories that I have got is basically pink over here, right? The neighbor. So what it happens is that this new point, it treats it at based on the distance, whatever point it is getting, it behaves in that way and it gets classified to that particular group itself. 
So I hope it is pretty much clear. So in this particular use case, whenever we get a new point, and whenever we need to do a classification problem statement, what it does is that based on the k value, it will try to find out which is the k nearest neighbor. Okay. And suppose I found out that from, and always remember this k value should be odd. If it is even, then there will be a scenario wherein you may get an equal number of, um, one, equal number of categories on both the side. That is basically on this side, you may get two categories. And in this side also, you may get two categories if I select k value is equal to four. So always make sure you select a value of odd and I'll also say, tell, I'll also show you how to select this K value, how you can come up with that. You have to make the K value as five. Okay. That will check it out as we do the practical implementation. So pretty simple algorithm in this, what we do is that we find the nearest neighbor. Okay. Based on the K value that we have selected, then whichever category is having the near maximum number of nearest neighbor, it belongs, it belongs to that particular category. Now this is with respect to the classification use case. Okay. Now what about regression? In regression use case, what we do is that everything is similar. Okay. Everything is similar. Okay. Here also we select a K value. Suppose my K value is five again over here. I have my data points displayed over here. Okay. Then my next data points are somewhere here. Oh. Now whenever I get my new point, Whenever I get my new point uh, somewhere here, then what happens? We'll go and calculate the okay, k nearest neighbor. So five points I will be getting over here. Okay. Then instead of seeing, and again, this will not be of two different categories. I'm extremely sorry about that. Uh, let me just draw the diagram once again. In regression problem uh, use case, I will not have classification, right? It will just be one similar point, right? All will be a continuous values over here. Okay. Now suppose I want to check what will be the value with respect to this particular input. Okay. Then what it will do, it will try to find out the K nearest neighbor that is five over here. If my K value is five, then what it will do is that it will try to find out the average of all this point. average mean of all this point. mean of all the nearest neighbor that it has found out. Uh, all the it, does, it will try to find out the mean of all the nearest neighbor and this particular new point will get that particular value. What, when whatever mean will come out of this particular thing, that particular point will get that particular value as its uh, predicted point. So this is with respect to regression. So this was about two different things. Again, always remember in K nearest neighbor will also get impacted by outliers. Because if there are a lot of outliers, then uh, it will very it will be very difficult for a classification use case. You know, it may get treated in a uh, um, you know in a wrong manner. Basically, it will, it will not be able to identify the correct uh, or predict the correct category. Uh, so, outlier it may get impacted with. It may also get impacted if the data set is imbalanced. Okay, so always we should try to. Uh, you know, fix these two issues. Uh, imbalanced data set. I've already created a lot of video on how to fix imbalanced data set and with respect to outliers also. So make sure that you fix all both these issues and then you try to apply a K nearest neighbor. Now, this was about K nearest neighbor. Now we'll go ahead and try to understand the implementation part. And the implementation is also very, very simple. And I'll make sure that I'll upload this in the GitHub. Uh, and I'll provide the uh, link of the GitHub URL in my description of this particular video. To begin with, guys, we have some classified data set from a company. Okay, what we'll try to do is that so this is this is the data set, and we I I really we no one will be able to understand. I have downloaded this data set from Kaggle. Uh, and this particular data set has some independent features, and the output feature is basically target class. Either you have to classify it to one zero. Okay, so as usual, I will be uh importing all these libraries, which I'll basically require, which is my tools basically uh, to solve any problem in machine learning use case. Uh, then I will read the classified data. And then this is how my data set looks like. Now the problem with all this feature is that uh, this being computer, the value may be of different, different things. So I'll make sure that I standardize all these variables. So for all of, for this, what I do is that I apply a standard scalar and uh, Apart from the target class, I will apply the standard scalar and all these features. So here it is. I've applied it and you can see that here is my scaled feature. 
I have imported standard scalar, initialized standard scalar, then I have done fit after dropping the target class. Then I have done transform. As soon as I do transform, and always remember guys, standard scalar basically means that all the values will get transformed uh, based on the standard normal distribution of that particular data. Okay. So after doing that, and after I convert that into a data frame, my data looks something like this. Okay. And this is how my data looks like after the standard scalar is applied. Next is that uh, I have so many features. So let me just see the distribution of this data by using a pair plot. So pair plot, again, uh, this is a very important technique. I can just use Seaborn and try to see that how my data is actually distributed. Okay. So I'll be taking DF with respect to Hui as my target class so that the classification point can be shown very clearly. Now, after executing this, now you can see that this is how my data is actually distributed. Now you can see that a whole lot of distribution is there. It is like intermingled of quite a lot. There's a lot of overlapping. So definitely I can't just apply a logistic regression into it or a decision tree because it will take much time. So I prefer using uh, k nearest neighbor for this. Okay. So after this, uh, I don't have to do train test split also because today I'm going to show you with the help of cross validation. But just for first term, I'll just be using train test. But later on, I'll be showing you with the help of cross validation. Now, in train test split, what I'll do is after doing train test split, every time everybody's familiar with this, I think there should not be a problem right now. Okay. Now, I'll apply kneighbors classifier, and it is getting imported from sklearn.neighbors. And inside this, I'm just passing n underscore neighbor as one. So instead of taking k is equal to five. Of k is equal to 6, I'm just taking as k is equal to 1. The reason I'm taking it because we have to derive this value, okay? We have to derive the k value. And the derivation is, uh, I'll be using a simple technique to find what should be the k value by doing a number of iteration, which I'll just show you in a while, okay? But let us just uh, think that the k value is 1 and try to do the fit. And after doing the fit, I'm doing the predict. After doing the predict, I can also find out the confusion matrix. From this confusion matrix, you can see that the precision and recall value I'm getting somewhere around 91% if my k value is 1. But still, it will lead to underfitting because my k value is just 1. And uh, with the if my k value is 1, it is very difficult to just uh, you know, predict based on just one nearest neighbor. So what I, do, I have to do is that I have to choose a k value. Now for choosing a k value, what I do is that I have made a list called as accuracy rate. Then I will run a loop from 1 to 40. Now just see what this loop is all about. This 1 to 40 values, I'm going to consider the k value. Suppose for k is equal to 1, I'll try to find out what is the accuracy that I got over there. For k is equal to 2, what is the accuracy? For k is equal to 3, what is the accuracy? For k is equal to 4, what is the accuracy? Similarly, to go till 40. And then I'll try to plot that accuracy rate and try to see that where the accuracy rate is quite stable. And then with respect to that k value, I can select the k value where the accuracy rate is quite stable. Okay. I can either do with accuracy rate or error rate. Okay. So here I'm doing with accuracy rate. So here I've written for i in range of 1, 40. So k nearest classifier, I've given n underscore neighbor is equal to i. I've used cross val score. This is what I was actually saying about cross val score. Okay. So in this, I'm going to give my knn and my df feature. Uh, which is my standardized scalar feature, all my independent features, and this is my target class. And here, the cross validation value I'm going to take is basically 10. Okay, so 10 different experiments. You know how cross validation works, train and test split will be internally happening. Uh, for 10 different in, uh, experiments, the train and test data set will always be different. Then finally, I'm going to append the accuracy rate over here. Okay, now see this after I append this accuracy rate, similarly, what I've done. Instead of calculating this accuracy rate, I can also calculate error rate. All I have to do is that I just have to write uh, in, the accuracy, uh, in the accuracy rate, uh, I just have to write instead of this score of dot mean, I'll write one minus score dot mean. So when I do one minus score dot mean, that basically means that whatever mean of the score that I've got with respect to accuracy, the remaining will be the error rate. So I've basically done that. So both the visualization part will happen. Okay. So first, this is my error rate, uh, or you can also use something like np dot mean prediction of underscore i. Any of this particular method, you can basically use this. Okay. So now let us go and plot the error rate. Initially, I'm plotting the error rate uh, and trying to find out what should be my k value. Okay. Then I'll also show you with the help of accuracy. Rate. Now let us go down. Okay. 
as soon as i plot and always remember guys this x axis is basically my k value because i'm putting range from 1 to 40 and that many experiments i'm learn i'm actually running right 40 different iterations i'm running with respect to 40 different k values okay so here it is and here you can see that the error is reducing the error rate is basically reducing when the k value was 1 the error rate was quite high then it came down it came down it came down suddenly it came down at k is equal to 13 then it again went up but at after this point you can see that your k value is going down and it has never come up again okay below this particular point so let us just consider that the k value over here i'm going to consider it as uh, 23 you know because after this you can see that after this y it is reducing okay so here i've written a comment here we can see that k around k is equal to 30 k is greater than 30 23 sorry the error rate just tends to hover around 0 0.06 and 0 0.05 okay so because of that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to consider the k is equal to 23 i can also check it for error rate so for that i'll just comment down this particular line and i'll just uh, for the error rate also you see that it is similar right because uh, error rate is one minus uh, the accuracy rate sorry this is for the accuracy rate so not for the error rate now this values you can see that it is going up again coming down but after k is equal to 23 after this particular point it is just going up it's actually running within this 93 percent accuracy okay so i'll suggest that k is equal to 23 would be a very good value for selecting the k value and this is how you have to select the k value you have to see that from where the error rate or the or the accuracy rate was continuously uh, stable at a specific point and it was not like zigzag line like how we have over here okay so now what i can do is that i can just select my k nearest neighbor as one over here and let us go ahead and select k neighbors 23 because i have selected my k neighbors as 23 I'll do, do the predict, I'll find out the confusion matrix and find out the classification report. Now, this is what I was getting of 95% with K is equal to 23. So this was about the K nearest neighbor, guys. Uh, a very simple, very simple algorithm, wonderful code over here that I've written already for you. All you have to do is that download it from the GitHub and start working with your own use case. There's a whole lot of a bunch of use cases in Kaggle, which you can apply with the help of K nearest neighbor. I hope you like this particular video, guys. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, like this particular video. Please do subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, make sure after subscribing, you put the subscription button notification. You press the subscription notification icon so that you get to know whenever I upload the next video. I'll see, I'll, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Uh, never give up. Keep on learning. God bless you all.